What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Giselle and if you're new here, I am a sonographer aka ultrasound technologist out here in Las Vegas and I love all things Disney. And today I wanted to do a video that is actually much, very much different than the norm video that I do. And typically I'll film with my phone or I'll film with a camera and I'll put a video together and I'm pretty much talking like this with this kind of background. But today I'm going to actually do like a podcast setup and just talk to you guys and answer your guys's question, which is how to become a sonographer after high school. And I feel like just me talking to you guys would be pretty, pretty cool. I feel like I would have no pressure and I've been seeing that you guys are watching our podcast videos, which is really nice. And I just wanted to try it out with this video and see what you guys think if you want me to go back to how I did my other videos. But it's just a trial run and we're going to see how this goes. It's basically me just giving you guys information and something that I feel like you guys need, which is just answering your questions straight up with a video. Because I get a lot of the same questions over and over again. And I think being able to have a video that is just there to answer the frequently asked questions for you, I can send it to you. And so this is what I'm going to try out today. And one of the questions that I've been getting a lot recently is having to deal with people who are in high school or people who are trying to get into programs and become a sonographer or become an ultrasound technologist. And so I wanted to make a little video that answers that question for those of you, especially in high school. So I wanted to reach out to you guys who are basically seniors or juniors, sophomores even, who are getting ready to go into the real world and realize you want to be an ultrasound technologist slash sonographer. Yes, they to both mean the same thing interchangeably. And this video is kind of geared towards you. I mean, this video can work towards anyone who is actually wanting to become a sonographer, but I'm not adding in all the other details of people who are switching schools or switching careers. This is just solely for those of you who are in high school and will want to become a sonographer right after. And these are things that I honestly should have done and wish I did back in the day. So this is something kind of for you to kind of check off your boxes and just to say, hey, I am on the pathway to becoming a sonographer. And this is the steps that I need to make sure I'm getting through. And yeah, I mean, that's pretty much what this video is for today. So if you guys do like this format, you do like this video, please comment down below and let me know so that we can answer more of your questions, more of your frequently asked questions, and we can go straight into the nitty gritty of the answer. So today's video is going to be how you can become a sonographer out of high school. So let's go. All right, you guys. So I'm assuming that for those of you who are asking this question, how to become a sonographer, what steps should you take after high school or throughout high school to become one, I'm assuming you already did your research on the field and know that this is something that you want to do. So just make sure that you do your research about this field. I have a ton of videos that are talking about the truth behind ultrasound. Is it really hard? Is it difficult? Is it easy? Things like that. So definitely make sure you do your research before you choose this field. And another thing is people always ask me between nursing and ultrasound. I do have another video about that as well. So go ahead and check those out before you decide. But I do have my phone here with my notes and stuff that I really wanted to make sure you guys have all the information you need to become a sonographer, especially coming out of high school. And in high school, you want to make sure that you have um, some things behind your belt that'll kind of be good for your college applications or even just your, you know, volunteer experience and things like that. Because coming out of high school, a lot of people's, a lot of people don't have jobs or uh, much experience like that. So, um, but I always get the question like, can I become a sonographer out of high school, even though like you don't have an experience? Like, yeah, you can become a sonographer. Uh, anyone can become a sonographer if they really put their mind to it. So definitely before you do anything, speak to a counselor at your high school um, or for specific help and questions. Ask them for more resources. See what the ultrasound statistics are around you. If there's a need for ultrasound technologists in your city or some people don't even want to stay in the place that they 
are living in and they want to move. So you kind of have to take that into consideration too. But just make sure that this is the route that you want to go toward and move forward with before you do any of these steps. So the first step that you guys are going to need to do is to look up your desired sonography program. And with that, you have to make sure you're looking at either associates or bachelors. So you can become a sonographer with an associates or with a bachelors. They both typically make the same amount of money. The only difference is that a bachelors can get you through to higher education. You can potentially get more supervisor jobs or move up higher. And I mean, people with associate's degrees can do that too. It just kind of depends on you as a person. And if you want that bachelor degree behind your name, but typically you will get paid the same amount depending on experience and where you live. So just kind of think about that. Do you want an associate's or do you want a bachelor's? And then make a list of your top three schools. So I didn't do that when I was a student because I was just going to the first college here in Vegas, UNLV. So I was like, hey, I'm going to UNLV and I was going for their nursing program. But when I switched into ultrasound, they luckily had a program there for ultrasound. So do top three. I think that'll help you, especially in bigger cities, because you have to do some research with these schools. So with that, if you have multiple schools in your area, make a pros and cons list for each. So you want to look up the program statistics. How many people do they allow in their program? Do they allow 10 a year? Do they allow 20 a year? Will they allow anyone in twice a year? Or, you know, every program is different. So just make sure you look up the program statistics because you want to see if the school is going to produce sonographers as well. And then also, I've heard that some schools have pretty big wait lists. So I saw somebody tell me they had a wait list of like 500, which is crazy. And I've seen other wait lists that are like years, like four, five, six years. And I don't know if you want to wait that long, but if you're looking to go in quicker, you would have to make a list of your schools. So that way you would know, okay, which school do I want to get into more, et cetera, et cetera. So making the pros and cons list will really help you decide, especially in places, for example, like Texas or New York, California, there's a bunch of different programs out there. So definitely take a look out here in Las Vegas, there's only two. So definitely look at the programs around you or where you wanna go, even if you wanna go out of state, make your pros and cons list and your top three. Then what you wanna do is look up each program's requirements. So every program will have a different type of requirement. Some people ask me, do I need to have prereqs before I get into the program or are the prereqs connected in with the program? And it goes both ways. Depending on the program depends on what you're going to have to need for your prereqs or no prereqs. So some schools in Texas, for example, have their prereqs in their program. So you just like apply to the program. And then other places like mine, there are prereqs and you need to take all the prereqs before you can join the program. So make sure you look at each program's requirement and you can check to see if they need a certain GPA, if they need your transcripts from your school, what the GPA from your high school needs to be to get into the program or what your GPA needs to be from those prereqs to get into the program. Some people's prereqs are different than others. So you definitely need to check those out. And that's why you make your list of schools. And then you want to see if they require volunteer hours. You need to see if they need you to have a CNA background because other places do require that. And coming out of high school, you're going to need to know everything that you need in order to get into that program. Because then if you're going somewhere that requires CNA, you need to make sure you do that whole CNA thing first before you do anything else. So extensive research is always a must. So after that kind of program specific research, you need to do even more research. And I wish I did more research back then, especially if you're looking to go somewhere else in another city or another state, what you want to do is join these Facebook groups. So there's two that I know of that are really good, just sonography and sonographers do it in the dark. 
those two Facebook groups have a ton of sonographers and sonography students in there. And what you're going to do is try to find someone who went there or is currently going there and try to talk to them and see what they had to do or what their requirements are. And this community is really nice. As small as it is, there's a lot of people in it. So what you're going to do is ask them, hey, how was the program? What's it like getting in? Any question that you really have. And if you can't find anyone, go ahead and join our Discord. We have a Discord with a ton of students in there who will help you kind of decide, you know, what you're looking for. If you have any specific questions, we're there to help you guys. So you can join our Discord. Just message me on Instagram or comment down below and I can give you more information on that. But join the conversation. Get your questions out there. Don't go into it blindly. And the more research you do will honestly help you in the long run because some programs will require you to have like an interview or something and you can tell them about all the extensive research that you did just to get into their program and a lot of people will really like that. So definitely talk to people as much as you can. And our community is growing. And so on Instagram, especially, you can find a lot of sonographers who are willing to help you, especially people who are just so generous with the posts that they're posting and all the help that they're giving. So definitely just reach out and find someone to talk to. And then if you can't find anyone or if you do and you want more information on top of that, I suggest you to talk to the school specific advisor or their program director and then ask them your specific questions especially after gathering all that research from everybody else, you can talk to the directors and have them know your name. So for me, for example, I wanted to make it a point for the director to know who I was. I wanted her to know who I was, know my priority was to get into that program and just show them your passion, show them that you really want this and that will take you a long way. So definitely talk to the program director. One of the most important questions you need to ask them is if their program is accredited and what accreditation body they are accredited by. So you want to ask them if they are CAAHEP accredited. So you're going to look at that website and see if they're part of that or if they're ARRT accredited. So you can see what the requirements are for you to sit for the board exams. And a lot of people don't ask that question or don't find out that question that answer because people will have a hard time taking their board exams after the program. So by you asking them these questions, it erases any fact of you trying to find out, okay, can I take the ARDMS board exams after I finish the program? Because that's where a lot of students have issues and they can't sit for their board exams because they didn't know about the ARRT requirements, et cetera, et cetera. So just ask them, hey, if I, if I go to this program, can I sit for the SPI physics board exam? How can I sit for the ARDMS board exams? And there's also CCI for any cardiac students out there if you wanna go into cardiac. So definitely ask your questions, ask them what the route is on how to take your board exams and to become certified as a registered diagnostic medical sonographer, because that's essentially how you become a sonographer or an ultrasound technologist. You have to take those board exams in order to become registered and be cert certified and basically practice out there in the real world. And then after that, you need to see if you can transfer any of your credits from high school. So if you take any college credit courses or if you plan on going to like a community college to take some classes and to, you know, let's say you want to take those first before you go into university, then see if all of that stuff transfers over. I get a lot of those questions like, hey, if I go to a community college, will those credits transfer that right there is very specific to your situation. So you need to ask that school specifically. So as much as I want to help you guys and answer your guys' questions and say, yeah, your credits will transfer over. Unfortunately, it's not going to always be like that. Some schools are about money too. And you are a basically price tag to them. And they just won't take some of your credits that you already took let's say for your high, in high school, they won't take that and they want you to take their classes at their university. So like I said, do your research and ask all the questions that you can ask. 
And then finally, uh, look out for the application deadlines, check the financial aid that they offer and see if there's any scholarships that you can potentially get. So with all of that, that's after you decide, okay, which program you are kind of leaning towards, you want to see if you can apply, you're checking off all the boxes from all the other things prior that you did all your research, and then you're going to finally apply to that program. And some programs, like I said, will have an interview process, and you'll have to go through the interview, and then try to get in. Uh, For example, my program, they took maybe at that time around 12 to 14 students. Now they're taking somewhere around 16 to 18. Every year is different, but they still do the interview process. And some places do not do an interview process. So you definitely wanna see and make sure you know what you're getting yourself into. And when you're all done with all of that, you apply for the program and you just try to get into your program. And it seems pretty, you know, it seems more easier said than done. And a lot of the issues that come out with people who are trying to become sonographers are they don't know if the school is going to allow them to sit for ARDMS because they're not accredited. And I'm going to tell you, I went to a bachelor university school, so it didn't matter if it was accredited or not. Because it was a bachelor's degree in sonography, I was able to sit for ARDMS. So make sure you ask all your questions before you join that ultrasound program and just, you know, make a list, check off that list and kind of go from there. And then once you get in, I think getting in, I think getting into the program is just as hard as being inside of the program because these programs are so competitive and there's only so many slots and so many people allowed in them. Uh, The one other thing that I had a thought of that I forgot to mention was that when you are looking for your programs, some of them are for general, some of them are for vascular, and some of them are for echo. So there's general, vascular, and echo, and you have to make sure the program you're going to coincides with the type of sonographer that you want to be. So a general sonographer does pretty much everything except for the heart and sometimes not vascular. And then some general programs include vascular, which is the arteries and veins, and other programs include vascular and echo together. So I have a ton of videos on these. If you don't know or you have any questions, please comment down below and I'll be happy to help you. And don't forget, you can join our Discord. And I hope that you guys found this video helpful. It's basically something that I wanted to do that's straightforward, to the point, and get you the answer to your questions. If I missed anything, please let me know in the comment section. And if you need anything else, don't hesitate to let me know because I'm here for you. And don't forget to like this video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and be part of the family. And until next time, stay safe out there. Stay positive and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.